This is the Builders Business Success Podcast for builders who want to attract more quality clients who aren't price focused, eliminate cash flow pressure, and get paid for every quote. Here's your host, Mick Hall. Hey, folks, welcome to another Builders Business Success Podcast episode. If you're new to this, if you've never uh, listened to one of these podcasts before, the purpose of it is to address as many of the common and very costly mistakes, problems, issues, challenges that um, we experience or you experience running a building business. There are many of them. uh, And the good news is, is the big majority of them are caused by the business model, the thought processes, the beliefs in what you can and can't do in a building business. In other words, you have complete control over the improvement and the growth of your building business. And they're the sorts of topics that we're going to be talking about. How we normally do it is uh, there's a specific topic that I'm going to cover. And in this particular episode, I'm talking about the number one reason why building businesses struggle and often fail. The number one reason. We're also going to do the uh, the Q and A. It's a question that we get asked a lot, and it's generally about how do I get off the tools? I hear what you're saying. I need to implement all of these things, but I'm on the tools. How do I get off the tools? <clears throat> so, going to be answering that question, and also going to be sharing with you, as usual, a personal productivity hack so you can get more done in less time and feel good about it. And I say that because more often than you would believe, when we teach particularly our Builders Business Black Belt members, uh, the, 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 the techniques to be able to become more personally effective and get a whole lot more done. Uh, I often have calls to say, you know, I'm getting what I used to get done in a whole day. I'm getting it done by 11 o'clock in the morning and, and I spend the rest of the day feeling guilty, which is a bit bizarre, but it's the reality. Um, we are sort of hypnotized into thinking that we're doing the right thing if we're working hard. And you've heard it all of the time, don't work harder, work smarter, but what does that actually mean? So that's the whole idea of the personal productivity hacks. So let's get on with it. The topic of discussion today is the number one reason why business owners of uh, building businesses struggle and often fail. Uh, And I guess we should start by talking about why did you bother in the first place? Like, why aren't you working for somebody else? And the reasons generally are money, time and choice. And what that means is that most people start their own business because they believe they're going to make more money than working for somebody else. They believe that they are going to be able to have far more free time because they're calling the shots. They're their own boss. And the third thing is choice. I will be able to choose who I can work with and and the sort of things I focus on and the direction that I want to go in and all of those sorts of things. So they're generally the three things that people um, who who decide to take on any sort of small business really, not just a building business, are motivated by. So it's money, time and meaning, we might say. Now, in most cases, when I speak to builders in any case, and I speak to a ton of builders every week, in most cases, many builders, the owners of building businesses, are earning less than the people that they employ. And, and if we unpack that, so you might think, well, you know, I pay myself X and I only pay my guys Y, uh, which means that I'm getting more. Potentially, but there is a thing that we like to use in Builders Business Black Belt to measure your progress and your success uh, with your business. And it's called the effective hourly rate. And basically what that is, is you calculate all of the cash that your business gives you. So that's any sort of profit as well as your wage and any sort of benefits you might get, you know, a a car that's paid for by the business. And you calculate how much money the business is putting in your pocket every 90 days or 365 days, but a period of time. 
Then you calculate, give it your best guess as to how many hours you work. But you've got to count everything. When you're, when you're in the office late at night doing invoicing and quoting and planning and talking to customers on the weekend and getting up early and traveling and all of this sort of stuff, calculate all of the hours that you put into your building business and then divide the cash into the hours um, or the other way around. <laughs> this is probably the best way of doing it. But basically, you by doing that calculation, you find out what your effective hourly rate is, how much you're being paid per hour for every hour that you're putting in. And when you do that, you will be very, very surprised. And I'll guarantee you that for the most of you, you will be uh, earning significantly less uh, than the hourly rate that you're paying your team members. The second thing we talked about was time. Um, the case for most builders is that they have very little time for themselves, for their own pursuits, for family time, for holidays. I can't count how many builders I've spoken to that said I haven't had a holiday for two years, three years, you know, of any, any uh, sort of length to speak of. They may have had a long weekend here or there but they haven't had the two, three weeks off at school holidays and a month off at Christmas and, and things like that, um, which is the whole idea. Uh, they haven't had the time to work on the business. Wob, work on business. They haven't had the time to work on the business because they're always working in the business. And then of course, the choice. And again, the feedback that I get is that You've got to make hay while the sun shines. Uh, sometimes we have to do jobs we don't want to do. You've got to take them on when you don't want to take them on. You've got customers you don't particularly like, but we have to do that. Have to means that you don't have a choice. So what I'm finding is with the money, the time and the choice, which are the three reasons that, that people start their own businesses, very few, if any of those three are ever uh, experienced in the way that motivated you to take your own business on in the first place. So enter Michael Gerber and the E-Myth, or now it's called the E-Myth Revisited. And I think there's spin-off books also uh, for different types of businesses. But I think just reading the, the standard E-Myth Revisited um, is, is a great place to start. And the E in e-myth stands for the entrepreneurial myth. That's really what the title of the book is. And Michael Gerber explains that the reason he wrote the book is because there seems to be this mythical belief out there that all small businesses are started by an entrepreneurial personality. And the fact of the matter is that they are not. Very few small businesses are started by a true entrepreneurial uh, personality. Um, in the book, he talks about for a business to be successful, you do need three people or three personalities. If it's just you and you're running the business, you need uh, to split yourself into three personalities. Uh, the first is the entrepreneurial personality and the, that personality is all about the direction and the purpose of the business, getting very, very clear on that. And again, I'll speak to a lot of builders and ask that question and they really don't know the direction or the purpose of their business. They kind of just fell into it. Um, the second personality Michael Gerber talks about is the, the manager. And so the manager's purpose is to ensure things get done. So the entrepreneur is that personality is talking about the direction that we need to be going in. And the manager's job is to figure out what are the actions that need to be taken to make sure we're heading in the direction that the entrepreneurial uh, personality has, has uh, identified and making sure those actions are being taken. So making sure it's getting done. And then the third personality is the technician. The technician is the person who does the technical work. So in a building business, it is the, the carpentry business. It is it is the bit organizing all of the sub trades. If you're a hairdresser, you are doing the hair, that, that cutting the hair and styling and perming and all of that sort of stuff. If you're a motor mechanic, you're servicing motor cars. You're do, uh, motor cars, <laughs> motor cars. 
motor mechanic servicing the motor car. That is the technical work. And Michael Gerber, once you understand that, there's the, the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. He then goes on to talk about the number one reason for small business failure. And by the way, I, I probably should have mentioned this up front. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been talking about business success and helping people with business for a long, long time. And when I first started it, the statistics around on small businesses starting, how long they lasted, uh, was around about 80, uh, sorry, um, yeah, 80% of all small businesses that started failed within a five year period. So that means only there was only a 20% success rate. Currently, the most recent information that I've been given is it's a little worse. It's around 90% of all small businesses fail, but in the first three years. So it used to be 80 fail, 80% 80 fail in the first five. Now it's 90% fail in the first three years. And then if you are in one of those businesses that ends up going for longer than three years, you're still struggling. So in my view, you're still, I don't know whether I should use the word failing, but if you're not succeeding, you're probably failing or at least struggling because success to me is having an understanding the direction that you want to go in. What's the purpose of your business? Actually going in that direction and succeeding in moving the business in that direction and having the time, the financial freedom and the meaning, like feeling good about what you're doing rather than feeling stressed and under pressure all of the time about what you're doing. To me, that's success. Anything other than that is a work in progress. You're not uh, succeeding if, if you're not hitting all of those three things, in my view, just my opinion. Now, Michael Gerber, as I mentioned, he talks about the number one reason for small business failure. And he says it is an assumption. And he says it's an, a fatal assumption. And the fatal assumption is this, that because you are good, at doing the technical work of a business. So if you're a hairdresser, you're a great hairdresser. If you're a motor mechanic, you can make the motors sing. If you're a builder, you, you build fantastic product, like fantastic homes, fantastic extensions. Your, your workmanship is absolutely top notch. And the fatal assumption is because you are good at doing that technical work, you assume that you will be good at building a business that does that technical work. And he says that assumption, that assumption that thinking that you'll be good at building a business that does that technical work is the fatal assumption, the assumption that causes most of small business failure. And so what he suggests in his book is um, the best thing you could do if you were a motor mechanic would be buy a hairdressing salon. And if you're a hairdresser, the best thing you could do is buy a, a motor mechanic business. And the reason he says that is because it's impossible for you to do the work. Like a hairdresser probably wouldn't be able to do the mechanic work and the mechanic definitely would be rubbish at cutting hair. So they can't do the technical work, which means that they have to figure out how to build their business and employ people, get other people to do the technical work. And to be able to do that, they need to learn how to build a business so it is profitable uh, and it is sustainable. To be able to sustain the entrepreneur, which is the person who owns the business, and potentially a separate manager as well, but not necessarily like you can be the manager and making sure things get done and you can be the entrepreneurial personality as well. But you cannot get stuck 100% of the time doing the technical work if you think that you're going to build a sustainable business. If you get stuck on the tools, doing the technical work, what you have done is bought, bought yourself a job. Basically, you are working for wages and you've got so much more pressure, so much more risk, probably less income, less free time, less choice than somebody who is working 
for a boss. And so what do we need to do? We need to change the mindset. We need to, 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 to make sure that we are prioritizing the work on ourselves, so our leadership, our communication skills, and what we call the WOB, the work on the business. So work on yourself and work on the business. And those activities need to become the priority. They must become the priority. And again, sound like a bloody broken record, but speaking to most builders, and, and they're speaking to us because they want to know about our programs, our support, our, our coaching, our help. Yet many of them don't take that step because, oh, mate, I'm too busy. I'm, I'm too busy to spend time, um, you know, learning how to, 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 do, to do these things. I, 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 I'm, you know, by the time I get home, I'm spent. And it's like, well, at some point, at some point, you need to decide that if I keep going the way I'm going, something is going to break. I don't know how many people have said that even at young, at young ages, like mid thirties, their body just won't take it anymore. They have bad backs and bad necks and all of this sort of stuff because of the physical work. So there will become a point where you just can't do it anymore. And think about this as well. There will become a point if it hasn't, if you haven't reached it already, where there are just no more hours that you can do. You can't grow your business because there are just no more hours that you can do. You're either working or you're sleeping. You're definitely not working on your business. That is a finite solution to to your business. You know, it, it's going to stop somewhere. Where if you start to work on the business and you figure out ways to um, automate things, to outsource things, to delegate things, to get them off your plate so you can work on the business, work on the direction, work on nurturing and building your team so they can run your business for you to give you more time to be working on more effective things, uh, better approaches to your business more resources to help your team become more efficient and more profitable, getting better clients, all of that sort of stuff. Super, super important, but it will never happen until and unless you decide to prioritize that work on the business. So I hope that makes sense. And, and it was a bit of a coincidence, but it was, it just worked out perfectly that the question that um, was, was posed to me to put into this this uh, episode of the podcast was how to get off the tools, which is probably maybe what you were thinking just then. When you know, how do I make the uh, how do I make the work on the business the priority? So that's the question I get asked all of the time. How, you know, how do I get off the tool? My back's shot. I can't do it anymore. I, you know, I never get time to for myself or work on the business. How do I get off the tools? Now, this may challenge you. The answer may challenge you, but there is never any growth unless there is a challenge. So here we go. The very first step that you need to take is to schedule at minimum a half day, if not a whole day in your office with no other purpose other than to work on systems, procedures, and get things off your list. So that's the first thing you, know, you need to do. And uh, it needs to be a priority. So fundamentally, you can only work, if you, if you work five days, you can only work four and a half or four days on site. So that's how you need to schedule your jobs. That's how you need to price your jobs, that you are in the office and you need to be paid to be in the office. So you can build your business properly to give you more freedom, more effectiveness, to figure out ways to give your customers better experiences, more value, all of those sorts of things, because then you can charge more, you can be more profitable, you can be less stressed, all of the good stuff. But you, it, it, you've got to start. You've got to start with a minimum of half a day in it, and it just needs to be blocked out. No ifs, buts, or maybes. You can't say, well, I'll come and help because you're a bit short. No, you have to be completely disciplined and start with that half day. You can choose a day that is, has the least impact on your, on your week, but it needs to happen. It needs to be regular. It needs to be scheduled. 
Second step, you need to build goals for your business improvement. You need to know what you need to be doing. You know, don't just get in the office and do invoicing and all of that sort of stuff because all you've done is is gotten off the, the physical tools on site and gotten onto the administration tool. So you're still working in the business. So there needs to be a certain amount of time in that half day or day that you're working on the business. Uh, and that's going to be covered in the personal productivity hack. But amazing how everything seems to be flowing from one thing to the other with this particular episode, but there you go. So second thing is you've got to have goals. You've got to have specific goals for your business improvement. The third thing you need to do, and this is the difference in the mindset between a business owner and an entrepreneurial personality, and that is get things off your list of things to do that reoccur. Okay, so an activity that you need to do at least once a week is put effort into finding ways to get things that reoccur. That, that means something that shows up on your list every single day or at least once a week, but it's every day or every week. We've got to get them off the list. And that's what an entrepreneurial personality does. They are constantly asking themselves questions on how do I get this activity off my list permanently? And there's ways to do that. And that's a whole nother conversation. A business owner just takes on more stuff. They just keep adding stuff to their list. I'll take responsibility for that. I'll take responsibility for that. And their list gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so you must have that mindset switch and make a commitment out of figuring out how to get things off your list permanently. And that needs to be a priority. I hope that makes sense. Here is a way that you can do it with the personal productivity hack in this episode. You may have heard me talk about it before, but it is a simple process, but very profound. And it's called time blocking. It's kind of in the name. You block out time. But the seat, there's, there's, there's some criteria to, for effective time blocking. And I'll guarantee you that time blocking will be one of the most powerful productivity hacks you will ever, ever implement. So listen very carefully to the criteria, stick to the criteria, implement the criteria, and it will work for you. First thing with a time block is you've got to have a start time and you've got to treat that start time like it is a plane taking off. It is a meeting with a VIP and it is. You are a very important person. You are a critical person to the success of your business and this appointment is with you. Don't be late. Be there, prepare to be there on time, if not early, for your time blocks. Absolutely critical. The second thing is you've got to have the right environment. If you're having a very, very important meeting with somebody, you're not sitting in an environment where things are going bing and alarms are going off on your computer and your phone and all that sort of stuff, and people are knocking on the door and saying, oh, no, you didn't need to, you know, you said you didn't want to be disturbed, but... Like you've got to put yourself in an environment where there aren't things going bing and people knocking on your door and things like that. You've got to be in a quiet, focused, non-distracting environment. So number one, start time. Number two, the right environment. The third is duration. So how long is your time block? Well, it can be five minutes. You can get a metric shit ton of stuff done in five minutes if you've got the right environment and you approach it correctly. So it could be five and could be up to 50, but I would suggest to you that the time block should never be any longer than 50. That should be your maximum, but it could be anywhere in between. So you've got to have a finish time, that's the duration. And then the fourth thing is you've got to have a clock. You've got to have a countdown timer, hopefully a visual one, maybe even a noisy one. You can get them online, you know, the old egg timers that go when you uh turn you know it's good to have that tick 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 going in the in the in the background it creates a sense of urgency and focus believe it or not and um it creates that sense of urgency because the time is disappearing the hours are falling the 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 sand is falling through the hourglass if any of you are old enough to remember days of our lives good reference for the older people um so that that clock is very important so it's counting back and b most important part of a time block is this 
it is, it is the reward. Because what we're doing when you do a time block is creating a, a, a neuro association, a link, an anchor in your nervous system to having done time blocks to pleasure. So what I suggest is just do anything at all immediately after the time block finishes. Let's say you're doing a 50 minute time block. I would suggest to you schedule, uh, schedule 10 minutes where you just do whatever makes you happy. Don't do work unless it's really, really super happy work, but just make sure you're doing something that makes you really happy, that you're excited, that you're interested in, that you have a passion for, and it backs right up to that time block. So you finish the time block, don't go over. If you haven't finished what you meant to do in that 50 minutes, bad luck. When the clock goes, you've got to stop and go to reward because what's happening is it creates that neuro association. And what that will do is cause you to feel like doing more and more time blocks. And the more time blocks you do, the more you will get, uh, get done, guaranteed. So there you go. Personal productivity hack, the time block. Use them, wear them out. So what's the takeaway for this episode? I just think from everything that we've covered is business success is is 100% completely in your hands. It's not in the hands of external circumstances. Yeah, I know stuff happens like COVID happened and, and the market shifts and all of that sort of thing. But if you are running your business as an entrepreneur, you will be out in front of the, those sorts of things. I know that when COVID happened for us this time last year, we had lots of discussion with our members about what was going to happen. There was massive uncertainty and we pivoted their focus, their message, and most of our Builders Business Black Belt members over 2020 have had the best year in the history of their business because they were out in front of it. They, they, things were changing, they were looking at what was changing and they were adapting to those changes very, very quickly. Your success is completely in your hands. Start time blocking. Start becoming an entrepreneur. Start giving priority to work on the business. That puts success right back in your hands. So have you got a question about any of this? If you have, all you need to do is book a call. And so uh, we're more than happy to talk to you, point you in the right direction, learn about your business a little bit so we can point you in the direction there's resources to help you all over the joint uh, and all we need to do is have a real quick call to find out what your hurdle is what you need to overcome to get moving and we can point you in the right direction really quickly there's often something in a business that is a roadblock and it's, it's a little bit like a damn wall you know there's a crack and if we can find what that crack is and and just poke at it the damn wall um, sort of breaks and, and it's probably a bad analogy to use right now with flooding and all of that sort of stuff, but that's what's going to happen. Uh, one problem in a business often will, when it's fixed, will get rid of a, a, an absolute heap of other problems. And just this call can help you figure that out. So how do you do it? Well, multiple ways. You can just click the button underneath this video. Uh, that'll take you to a form, fill it out, tells us a little bit about your business. Then you can schedule a real quick call and it will be quick. It's like seven to 10 minutes, something like that. And you will be pointed in the right direction. If you're just listening to the audio only version of this podcast, all you need to do is navigate to buildersbusinessblackbelt.com.au and there are schedule call, schedule a call buttons all over the, uh, the website. Uh, you can even, I think, ask questions in the website. A little pop-up thing will come up and we can point you in the right direction there as well. But schedule a call so we can learn a bit about your business and point you in the right direction. It's the fastest way. So if anything I've said in this episode is something that you would like to implement, you would like to experience, you would like to integrate into your business and you're not sure where to start, jump on a call, we'll point you in the right direction. So I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Builders Business Success Podcast. I hope it's got you thinking. I hope it's challenged your thinking. And uh, I hope it's inspired you to do something a little different than what you've been doing. Because as Zig Ziglar used to say, if you keep on doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep on getting what you've been getting. So we need to change what we've been doing, change what we've been thinking. We're here to help you do that. So we'll be back. Uh, before you know it, with another episode of Builders Business Success 
podcast. Uh, you can also come and join us in Builders Business Success Forum. Just get on the Facebook um, and search for Builders Business Success Forum. Jump in the group, ask questions. There's a ton of resources going in there as well. So we'll be talking to you again in the next episode of the podcast. I'm Mick Hawes from Builders Business Black Belt. That is all. Bye for now. Okay, that's the podcast. If you have a question or want to know how Mick can help with your building business, email your request to mick at buildersbusinessblackbelt.com.au. Do it. Do it now.